Okay, just like the last game, it's a Queen's Pawn opening, and how will Magnus react? In this tournament, we've already seen him play the Dutch defense, the King's Indian defense, the Grunfeld defense, every opening. And uh, now, okay, it's a Queen's Gambit. Maybe the Netflix show uh, inspiring the two players. Will we see the Queen's Gambit accepted, which means Black capturing this white pawn that's just moved, taking the gambited pawn, but no, the Gambit is declined, and Magnus goes for the Slav. Laughing, meanwhile, uh, this time not laughing about falling asleep, laughing about something else, clearly, but this is known as one of the most solid openings in chess. Black just puts pawns on light squares, blocks things up, and uh, tries to stay solid. So, OK, right now, Duda has got to decide whether to trade pawns in the center, bring his knight out, push a pawn. This is uh, a line I think we call the slow Slav, uh, just because yeah. things will take a while to open up later. Yeah, I was just about to say this. I, I, I haven't it's, seen him playing the real Slav. I, I think usually he goes for the... Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a clever move order that has actually been advocated by um, Sam Shankland in his yeah. chessable course. I'm not quite sure it's a slow Slav, but, uh, um, but anyway, the whole point is that you don't have to deal with pawn takes pawn and uh, just a nice kind of uh, move order trick. And uh, Magnus actually choosing the queen, developing the queen, which is a solid, and uh, White is just going for a slightly better position. Mm -hmm. Yep, Duda developing the queen there, and Magnus reacting by pushing a pawn. He's getting ready to develop Black's light squared bishop, which is actually the problem child in this type of opening. You know, look at the Black light squared bishop, it's actually blocked in by its own knight, previously by a pawn, so now it's created, uh, it has a nice home at least on the b7 square. Then Black's rook can slide across to the se uh, to the centre, and I think both sides will focus on castling the king. In a few moves' time, the centre is closed right now, so there's no urgency uh, for that. Both sides just developing pieces, maybe aiming for pawn breaks later. Meanwhile, Duda, he's staring up into the heavens, yeah. looking up into the sky. Ooh, Beth Harmon! <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to remember <laughs> what to do. Yeah, exactly. Which, yeah. which line to test. Exactly. No, so, but it's, it's going to be like that, you know, they're going to castle and, and develop and... and uh, some rooks to the to the same file as the queen, mm -hmm. pointing at the queen. You know, yeah. you have seen this game before. Yeah. You've yeah. probably even played it. <laughs> I've played yeah. something very similar. To this. <laughs> Me too. White rook will go. Yeah, white <laughs> exactly. rook will go opposite the black queen. Black rook will go opposite the white queen, and there's just a bit of a standoff. Yeah. 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 And uh, white star square bishop will find itself on the edge of the board on the b2 square. Mm. And uh, we, we did. This is like the perfect opportunity to ask uh, you both a question that has been put to you by Johnny Slaw, who asks, David, if you were to play Magnus in a blitz game as white, what would your opening choice be? Ooh, good question. Um, I have played Magnus a few times, uh, normally informal blitz games, just friendly blitz games. And uh, I've tried two different strategies. One is the Reti opening, just kind of solidly getting out, surviving the opening and trying to take the game quickly uh, towards the middle game. But um, I've had slightly more success maybe by opening with the King's Pawn and being very direct, something like the Scotch game. But the problem is against Magnus, no matter what opening you choose, <laughs> at some point he tends to outplay you. So um, yeah, it's it's a tricky one. I think that's the hardest, uh, hardest kind of matchup in chess, yeah. playing Magnus and Blitz. How about you, Pontus? Uh, I will definitely go with the king's pawn, you know. Um, Why? Because, no, because the best chance for me is to attack him. Mm. Uh, or that he falls asleep. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there he is again. Is so, it sleep so this, or is it laugh? Yeah. You're like well, a hypnotist. Just every <laughs> time you say the word sleep, Magnus just <laughs> his head goes down. Yeah, no, no, but I, I would definitely go for the attack, you know, mm -hmm. because that's the, the best chance to win. Even from the get go? Yeah. You you have to you have to try to attack him. Right? Yeah, because it's also you have to also go on your own strong points. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because what a lot of players do as a mistake is that they try to just uh, you know oh I am playing Magnus. I remember Prague was playing uh, one one time and he he fell into thoughts after like three moves, you know, and then he fought like for one hour. And that's his respect or something like this that he's thinking, you know, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't really think about moves. Mm -hmm. It's his respect. Oh, and then after, you know, 15, 20 minutes, oh, I can't play that, I can't play that. Oh, and, and, yeah. and so you have to believe in your play, you know, and attack him. And usually the guys who are having the best scores are actually those guys that are not afraid of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incidentally, I've been, uh, this morning, I was watching the course that I was talking about yesterday by, uh, for, for Chess 24 Premium members. Uh, it's won by Spanish Grandmaster ah, yeah, Ivan yeah. Salgado Lopez. And was I that went, the swindler? No, this was the one that, uh, oh, that he, he talks about. Yeah. He talks about um, 
playing like Magnus ah, in Rapid and Blitz, yeah. but he has a chapter on how to beat Magnus, how to play against yeah. him. And uh, there he, he says, uh, more or less like you guys, that uh, you should play the best moves, which is easier said than done, but uh, you should actually aim for positional advantages mm. because uh, this is something that Magnus is so good at that he will for himself feel discomfort. Yeah, I think maybe in a classical game that would be the way to go because direct attacks might not work so much, but in Blitz... Yeah. yeah, at least I think you have to attack, have to attack him. attack him. Yeah, yeah because he, he, he's better in those... Uh, because Blitz is a lot of intuition, you know? Ah. And, and his intuition is the best in the world. Yeah. So, uh, if, if, because if you go with a slow positional game, the, I, what I've noticed at least is that, for example, if I play with Blitz game, with, with informal Blitz game or with Magnus, or that his intuition is much better than mine. Mm -hmm. So if I play in his way, he's going to spot the moves uh -huh. faster than me. Yeah. And that's a problem for me because the blitz is about time as well, you know? Of course. So then let's say that I survive, but then I have no time, so I lose. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to lose some time. So it's always... Uh, so, so I can't play the same type of chess as fast as he can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if I find all those moves, <laughs> I will lose some time. Uh, I think yeah. That's good advice for any player playing against someone a bit stronger than them. Just don't give them positions where they can rely purely on their intuition. Mm. Just make them calculate, make them find only moves or make them kind of make big decisions where they have three or four options on every turn. That's the only way to confuse them and showing no fear. Um, often when I play lower rated players, they show me too much respect and then I know that eventually I'll beat them just because they're kind of submitting to everything I want to do on the board. Yeah. But uh, if they just go all out at me, just no fear, going for my king, sacrificing pieces, I get afraid, mm. and uh, even Magnus does that, even against lower rated players occasionally. Uh, we've seen it from Daniel Dubov attacking Magnus. He's checkmated him a few times. Uh, we've seen yeah, Magnus lose a few games on the tour just when people stop yeah. respecting him too much. And uh, meanwhile, a few developments on this board. We did see actually a trade of pawns in the center. So we were talking about how it was a bit of a standoff. Things would just slowly open up, but things open up very quickly due to going on the attack uh, or trying at least against Magnus. And suddenly the white queen has found herself over on the side of the board the Black Queen now developing, and this is really interesting for Magnus. He's kind of keeping us guessing. He's keeping Duda guessing. Which way is the Black King going to go? And that's the main question right now. Black has a healthy position in general, the two Black Bishops pointing towards the White King. But if the Black King goes over towards the White Queen, whoops, you're going to walk into an attack. If you go over to the other side, it's maybe more open, but at least White has no pieces over on the left flank. So really... Uh, kind of fascinating moment. I'm expecting Duda to think for quite a long time on the next two or three moves, just because he's going to be making a plan for if Magnus castles king side on the right side and uh, also if Magnus castles on the opposite flank. Really yeah, it's going to get sharp. Mm -hmm. huh. yeah, yeah, and there is also a lot of interesting variations. So they are thinking about it. They have to calculate now. Uh, mm. Because the, the natural move will be to, to move uh, the pawn next to the bishop, uh, one, one square. And then try to develop the bishop. Mm -hmm. So, so the, because you need to develop your pieces, you want to get a, that one out. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there is uh, also some interesting ideas. You know, maybe you can go completely crazy with. with yeah. Magnus is always going to try to to somehow sacrifice his his g pawn. Mm -hmm. So that this pawn is going to try because if that pawn is gone, mm -hmm. it, it, you have a lot of pressure down towards uh, Duda's king. Yeah. So that's what he's, he's looking for, ways to, to, to do this move, basically. Yeah, so something like this later, just give up a pawn and try to attack the white king yeah. using some open lines. And I think that's the big question. And, uh, okay, Duda didn't develop his bishop uh, using this diagonal. Instead, he just planted it in the centre. Uh, just a bit of a kind of stopgap move. Looks a bit I'm strange I'm surprised. To me. I'm surprised by that move. I actually was calculating what's going to happen after pawn takes pawn, mm -hmm. which is like a, a very forcing move. And uh, then, you know, Black has some questions to answer. Where are you going to, are you going to capture with the queen? Pro probably, you're going to have to. And then, you know, the queen can get kicked around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, queen takes pawn. Now white can play the same move he did in the game, but just gaining time mm. against the black queen, forcing her back. Um, so interesting decision. It's funny, you guys were saying, OK, push this pawn or maybe capture this pawn. I was looking the other direction. I was thinking, maybe bring the bishop out here. My other first thought was, maybe bring the bishop out here, the yeah. way, <laughs> uh, just to uh, destabilize this pawn. And if the bishop is captured, then the white queen can actually capture the knight, attacking this rook and stopping black from castling, cutting across this diagonal. Uh, so castling would be illegal here. But uh, so many tempting options. Duda chose maybe, I wouldn't say the least ambitious of them, but uh, at least the least direct of all those options. White's bishop now on a decent square. And it's that question for Magnus. Do you castle this way? 
uh, and maybe walk into an attack because the White Queen is over on this side? Or do you be even more ambitious and castle on the opposite flank? But this is also risky because suddenly White is going to be the one throwing pawns forward towards your king later. And uh, with opposite side castling, it's just a race. Whose attack is going to be quickest? Uh, white can start that attack at some point by throwing pawns forward. Black as well, as Pontus mentioned, will start attacks by throwing his pawns forward, even at the cost of pawns, just to open up lines. And uh, I personally want to see Magnus do this, just because it'll be so exciting for us uh, sat here in the studio. But for him, he needs to weigh up the, uh, the risk entailed. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not really a Magnus type of move to do that, right? No. To initiate kind of real chaos. Uh, it would be more maybe Magnus's style to just, uh, after this bishop move, to, I don't know, just kind of stabilise the position. It's just not easy to, sh uh, to find how to do that. Uh, he would love to just trade things off and make it clear, uh, make the path to a plan clear, but how? That's the big question. Black's king has to commit itself sooner or later. Yeah, that's not an easy decision, uh, David. And uh, whilst we come up with a solution, um, I wanted to show you a very cool selfie. And I love it when everyone tells us where they're watching the show from. And Saif Shikli is watching the games from an Iraq oil field. Ooh. And uh, yeah, there he is in his uh, uniform and uh, incredible stuff, Saif. So thank you for sharing how you're watching. And uh, if you two want to send us your questions, your thoughts, your selfies, remember, take them in landscape mode, then as always, you can tweet us using the hashtag. And I would also like to ask you two uh, a question that Jane asks us. She says, I will be playing my first ever over the board tournament at my university. Any tips or things I should keep an eye on? Ooh, mm. over the board game. Mm. So I'm assuming that uh, Jane's experience has mostly been, uh, I online. guess, online. Um, the first thing I would say, oof, I mean, writing down the moves can be tricky, something to get used to. Mm, keep an eye on that clock. It, <laughs> you have to press it rather than just uh, automatic, like uh, like we see in online chess. Yeah, I, I would... Cool. I would say after every move, if you have the time, I would try and do a quick scan of the board and blunder check. Just make sure that nothing is going to attack it. And uh, just ask yourself, you know, is this trade good? Is what I'm making good? And uh, think about what your opponent wants to do. And if you can, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just yeah. visually, it looks different, right? A physical board compared to the online yeah, screen. Right. So definitely double check things. It's a big difference, you know, 2D and 3D. Yeah. So this is this is the thing that she needs to before the tournament she should play also some game with some friend or something mm. yes to to get used to the difference because one of the biggest difference there is David said with time that you basically online you can make quite a lot of moves in no time you know mm -hmm. you can even use this pre move function so you can make like ten moves in a in a second <laughs> when you play live you can really not do that yeah. so the time is actually a factor and this is something that if you have played online a lot, uh, this is going to be a shock when you yeah. get to a real tournament. And, and one other thing I just thought about, uh, when you're playing online chess, you can kind of hover your mouse over every single piece. You can even click on it and may try to make a move. On over the board chess, you cannot do that. Yeah. If you touch a piece, you have to move it. Exactly. So uh, always good, good idea yeah. too. So you can't change your move, for example. No. Uh, which you can do online, you know, you can hover over a piece and then you change to another one. Yeah. I, I had a moment, you know, because I haven't played over the board chess for quite a while. So I had a moment when I was, when Saad was uh, practicing his chess skills against me. And I wanted to take back, I picked up my queen and I wanted to take it back. But I was like, no, I can't do that. That's not, that's not the etiquette anymore. So I just uh, put it down. I just thought, okay, I have to stick to my move, even if it's a blunder. All so right. you're cheating against the kids. Yeah. No, I, no, 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 I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. I picked up my queen and I was thinking, this is not a good piece to move. Uh, we, have to, we have to tell Sam that have you are to... not a good role model. Yeah. <laughs> is cheating, so stay no, no, no. I did once try to take back in a simul and they went, no. I always allow take backs, but they, the kids, they don't allow me that privilege. And yeah. I thought, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, talking about kids and online chess, we were talking about um, chess to change contest coming yeah. up on April 23rd, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we talked about it during the first game. It's, it's basically teaming up business people, maybe in Silicon Valley, uh, with kids and chess talents, basically, from Africa yeah. to play online tournament hand and brain. Super yeah. cool concept. Uh, and you told me there's actually spots available. 
Yeah, 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 definitely. So if if uh, uh, someone see, sees this program or has some friend who you know from the business community, or it it can also be you know athletes uh, or, Ooh, or so, someone cool. else, you know that uh, or or just. Yes, uh, Hobby players that are interested in taking part, you know, yeah. they, then they can just reach out to us. They can always enter the, the website, you know, yeah. businessmitchessandkids.com. It's not that complicated. <laughs> so uh, then they can read more about it and yeah. they can just send us an inquiry um, because we still have spots left. Yeah? yeah. So if someone wants to pay, play, they can. They can come. All right. So uh, we actually we have some information about this in the bottom of the screen. You can see right now. I'll add into that um, how uh, businesses now can reach out if they want to join this fantastic event. Um, so I'll uh, guide them to the website where they can find information about signing up for playing this online hand and brain tournament with chess talents from Africa. Very very cool initiative. All right. We do have some moves on the board. We do have a couple of moves. So uh, actually Magnus just pushed a pawn, so still delaying that big decision with the Black King, which he might have to make on this turn. But uh, after Black just pushed a pawn, we saw a capture in the center, one that Yvanka was advocating. And now after a trade of one set of pawns, White's Knight has just planted itself in the middle of the board. And this is a multi-purpose move. The White Knight, if given the opportunity, might dart over to the left, start attacking the Black Queen. That could be very scary for Magnus to deal with. And uh, meanwhile, still this big decision, which side to go with the king. And suddenly it's it's not so clear. It, the big question is whether you can even castle on this turn without allowing some nasty, uh, nasty side effects, nasty kind of consequences. So um, right now, if we jump in, the big question is, can you castle? And OK, Magnus delays it again. I was going to say, if you castle on this side, the queen side, then this king is a big target. White's knight is going to jump over, attack your queen, attack this pawn as well. This looks disastrous for black. So uh, this was not possible, but if you castled the other way, then suddenly there are consequences such as bishop takes pawn. I highlighted this concept, this kind of pattern a few moves ago. Again, this pawn is overworked suddenly. If it captures the white bishop, then the black knight falls and suddenly, whoops, this king is just too open. Uh, we could see what we call a rook lift, a rook swing. Just check and uh, this would be disaster again for the black king. So Magnus decided, okay, still delaying uh, castling and pushing a pawn taking this square away from the white knight, uh, just covering it, but it's so slow and Duda, okay. I was gonna say there might be consequences, there might be threats, but he just reacts by pushing a pawn, getting ready to uh, push even more and gain even more space. And still that dilemma exists for Magnus. How is he gonna get his king to safety? Neither side looks safe. And uh, the longer you leave it here, the more risk you entail. So, oof. I'm not envious here of Magnus at all. I think it's not his type of position. He's going to get attacked no matter what. And as Ponto said, that's a decent strategy against the best players in the world. Just attack them fearless, fearlessly and mm -hmm. even they do get nervous sometimes. Yeah. Um, one of the things I kind of wanted to say though is that Duda's last move seems to me, I, I know it is actually threatening to push the pawn forward and attack the bishop, chase it away, but it does feel like it's a little bit slow. And it doesn't quite feel like this is the most critical continuation that Magnus should be scared about. I mean, I just with the king in the middle of the board, you're kind of, I was kind of hoping for something very, very aggressive. And uh, just in light of Duda's continuation, I mean, can the black bishop just step backwards two squares and just go, I know it's on a dance, but it is going to look at the, black, the white queen and uh, defend the knight and get ready to kind of castle the king. I think you have to play a move like that right now. Magnus has to go on the defensive, start uh, kind of taking these measures to, uh, first of all, castle his own king, but prevent White's activity coming. Yeah, Yvanka, it's interesting you say that that move is slow. That was my first instinct too. Uh, it felt like White maybe could have thought uh, a bit longer, gone for something a bit more direct. But then again, we did see Magnus slightly shake his head and uh, he is still the one, if any, uh, of the two players. He is the one, Magnus, here who is nervous already. Who's ne who needs to play accurately, needs to play on the defensive. I think one wrong move here as black, and you might even lose. Oh, wow. And for white, you've got a bit more margin for error. Uh, still some hope for black if uh, the black king could find safety, but it's not a given right now. Mm -hmm. I like Ivanka's move, though, bringing the black, light square, uh, black dark square bishop sorry, back, planting it in front of the black king just to act as a defender, uh, just mm -hmm. to keep the position stable for the next few moves. It seems like Magnus is making some sort of a plan 
We see Herbert from Ireland donated $102. Thank you so much. And uh, please, if you do have the opportunity, uh, please donate to our fundraiser for UNICEF doing life-saving work for the refugees now from the war in Ukraine and also people and children still living inside Ukraine. David from United Kingdom <laughs> donated. Dr. David, is that what it says? Yes. Wow, cool. Don't so that's your nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. David, that's Dr. what we David. have to call David when we're not on the show. <laughs> I wish I had that title. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for um, participating in this important fundraiser. And uh, after this game, we're going to have another charity challenge. It's actually going to be with 15-year-old Saad, who is a big chess talent, 2,000 uh, on the rating list in classical chess. And you know Saad. Uh, Pontus. He's actually from the Business Meets Chess and Kids uh, program, basically. Yeah. What is his story? Well, uh, his story is uh, basically that uh, he has parents from uh, Somalia mm -hmm. and uh, they, they, of course, immigrated to, to Norway. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there is always, uh, I shouldn't say always, but there is a lot of times there is some challenges when you come to a new country and so on, you yeah. know, and, when they try to establish, to get integrated, to get to know, you know, local people, Norwegian people and so no on. So, so Saad, uh, for example, he has, uh, he, he picked up chess at some point and he started to play and there was uh, his chess club, Barum, has helped him a lot throughout the years as, as well. That's great. And then uh, we came in contact with him and his, also his brothers, uh, Abdi Shakur and Abdi Rizek, they also play. Oh, cool. And uh, they, they're also quite good. Yeah. Uh, so so we, we just thought it was cool uh, that, that uh, such a kid, that they are interested in chess. Mm -hmm. And Saad is the most interested in chess, yeah. you know, so he's also the best uh, right at the moment. Super talented. Yeah, and he's, he's playing in the uh, Norwegian uh, national youth team. So, uh, he, he, you know, he's very, very interesting. He asks questions about chess all the time and he was playing with Jovanke in the break. And he, wow. he really, really likes chess, you know. And then, but the problem is, of course, the funding and this kind of things so yeah. for him to go to a tournament, you know. And 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 to chess to, as well, to, like other yeah. sports, it's yeah. expensive, it's right? Expensive to 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 buy books, you know, to buy equipment, yeah. to 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 maybe if he's going to watch some chess able course or whatever it is, you know, he absolutely. everything costs money, yeah, you know. Absolutely. And and uh, so for example, to study uh, when he's going now to this uh, NTG Elite Sports yep. Gymnasium. Which also Magnus went yeah, to, Magnus right? Magnus went there, exactly. Yeah. You know, then you, there is school fees. And yeah. uh, that's very hard for the family to pay, you know, because they don't have that wallet. And, and therefore, uh, you know, it, it helps a lot if we, you know, can meet some, some business guy and, and like with Morten now with Ferd and yeah. so on. You know, they found each other and then Ferd suddenly sponsors him. So, so this, this is how you can use chess, you know, to, to match people. And now, we, I mean, I've been uh, watching him play today uh, before the show. He has a future in chess. There is no doubt about it. It's a great story. And, oh, I'm looking forward to seeing him play in the chat. How many moves do you think he can last against Magnus 10 with two minutes on the clock? Well, uh, you can turn it around. How many moves can Magnus app last ah. against that? Because I think it's, he's the favorite. <laughs> yeah. I think he's better than that app. Yeah, if he had unlimited time. Yeah. He would definitely uh, yeah. be able to win that game. But he's quite fast, actually. So he's uh, he's 2600 or something on chess.com. So he's he's not, incredible. He's, not, he's 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 better in faster games. Yeah. He likes it also. He likes the the when when there's some uh, tension. Oh, <laughs> he's going to be our youngest uh, participant ever in uh, the charity challenge, uh, Young Sad, and that's coming after this game. I bet his idol is uh, Magnus Carlsen. And uh, is he fighting to survive in this game, Magnus, now? Still, I would say yes. If wow. you look at all of White's pieces, they're mobilized. OK, uh, really interesting castling now with Black. All of White's pieces are mobilized. Two White Rooks teaming up Black, the White Bishops in the, uh, in the middle of the board, kind of with that gaze focused on both sides. The White Queen, nicely placed for an attack. White centralized knight. They're all fantastic. I was about to say Magnus, his king situation was still uh, not ideal, but he has decided to castle and I think he's banking on some tricks here. He definitely is because my first instinct was like, wow, he's allowing that trick that David pointed out. Bishop takes pawn and uh, suddenly the knight on f6 is a little bit unstable because pawn takes bishop isn't really possible because the queen takes knight and the king is just too shaky. So, I mean, Magnus has a crafty trick up his sleeve, though. His idea is actually not to capture the bishop, but instead to go bishop takes pawn himself. 
Quite possibly, yeah. Bishop takes pawn would be a check. And after the white queen recaptures, then after we see a trade here, we could see black recapturing the white bishop. Here I still prefer white, to be honest, because black has an isolated pawn. White has a potential passed pawn over here as well. But uh, maybe this is what Magnus is relying on. And uh, maybe also another trick uh, in this position, if white had gone for this, then possibly now he could have captured the pawn. And when the white king moves, he could have mm. either put his queen in the middle, offering a queen trade, or brought his bishop back. And it's very complicated. I think Duda just didn't want to allow this, an attack against the queen, attack against the knight. Therefore, he dropped his knight back. And uh, in this position, after White's knight has retreated, there's one clear idea. Duda wants to break open the line towards the Black Queen, push this pawn forward. This is supported by nearly all of White's pieces right now. And uh, Magnus reacted very quickly by bringing his yeah. bishop to the center. It's something we saw Duda do actually in the first game, planting the bishop in the middle of the board, and now just trying to trade off pieces before it's too late. Note how as well, this bishop defending the Black Knight. So that trick we highlighted. Uh, of the white bishop taking a pawn is no longer on the cards. Black's pieces all defending each other. And uh, what do we think? Magnus just about in time to protect everything. It feels like he was really playing with fire with his king, but now he's castled. Now he's at least ready, if needed, to trade some pieces. I well, think Magnus is okay again. Well, he's up uh, a bit on time as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, but also I think Magnus is a really good defender. You know? Yeah. yeah. He, he, uh, I've seen him play this... Uh, Bullet and Blitz or whatever it is against Naka. And I was, uh, I, I'm rarely extremely impressed by, by something, but those games are very impressive because oh, yeah. they play on only one minute and, and, and it's just seconds, you know? And they, they defend, he defends so well. The and quality they, is still. Yeah, the quality is very high and yeah. also many times he defends so well. And then usually Naka is the one who's losing the games <laughs> because he gets angry and frustrated. <laughs> and then he has to blunder something and, and Magnus wins. And I, because Magnus has sometimes, you know, 20 moves, he needs to play the only move, and he does it. It's and incredible. I, and I remember there was also something with chess.com that he... Uh, they, because they have this uh, cheating sensor, mm -hmm. and it actually was screaming the first time Magnus was playing. <laughs> he was <laughs> so cheater, good. cheater, because he hit too high percentage yeah. of the moves of the computer, the first move. Yeah, we, let's jump into the position because Duda's thinking a long time and he's under four minutes right now and uh, he has a huge Ooh. decision to make because he has to do something. He has to go on the attack. I think it's time either to push this pawn forward as he was planning to do or maybe even just come back with his knight to the center because what else? Suddenly, you don't want to trade off the rooks. If all the rooks disappear, for example, if white initiates these trades, then black is actually going to have the better pieces. Black's queen now is going to firstly maybe start threatening some checkmating ideas. Maybe the black queen as well can jump to the center, attacking white's bishop. Note how the white queen is suddenly offside, not helping, and uh, white would be in huge trouble. And we're actually seeing something very similar to this. I mentioned the knight maybe coming back to plug the open file to stop any exchanges of the rooks. Instead, white pushed forward. And Magnus instantly trying to put pressure now on Duda on the clock, traded a set of rooks. And uh, if Duda recaptures, then Magnus will do the same. He will just offer this trade of rooks, trying to break through towards this white king. We talk about it all the time. The white king lacking breathing space, lacking luft, uh, lacking an escape square. And uh, the back rank tactics against this king might continue. Uh, we could see a line just to show one variation, maybe. Uh, for example, if white captures a pawn, gets greedy, then we would see a trade of rooks and black's queen now just breaking through the white queen, not able to help out. Uh, so we saw another move there from Duda and a bit of a weird one, a bit of an ugly move, uh, not uh, capturing with all of the rooks, but instead in this position, sorry, uh, taking back with his bishop. And the reason I say ugly is because this bishop on the first rank could be a target. The black rook sliding across and look at this, there's a massive trap in the position. If white plays the most greedy move and plays pawn takes pawn, it looks like white's winning a pawn, attacking the black queen with a pawn, attacking with a rook as well, then suddenly Magnus would win with a queen sacrifice. Queen takes rook, eliminating the only defender of white's bishop. And after the queen is recaptured, this is the exact tactic, uh, tactic I was talking about. Mm. This is checkmate, back rank checkmate, no escape square for the white king. And uh, this is actually on the cards right now. Duda doesn't fall into that trap. The bishop was a target. Pawn takes pawn would have lost on the spot, as we just saw. So he brings his bishop back to a square. It cannot be targeted, but things are turning in Magnus's favor. This white queen now just offside. And uh, I expect Magnus here maybe to just to block things up. And uh, the game goes on, but white is playing temporarily without the queen. And okay, he does this. He blocks things up. 
and he is the only one with control over the open file now. The bar is liking it for the world champion right now. Yeah, and uh, Duda, you know, many people will be asking what's happening here because uh, he just pushed forward his protected pass pawn, the most amazing pawn there oh, is. And what happens here? And he's just offered it up for grabs. I think Magnus actually kind of trusted Duda's bluff on the last turn. Duda pushed a pawn forward, attacking Black's bishop. I think that pawn could have been captured safely. And uh, th that's just due to some back rank tricks, um, actually very similar to the ones I highlighted. So Duda gave up a pawn. I think Magnus, Magnus could have just grabbed it, but Magnus said, no, nope, I trust you. And now look at that black bishop in the corner. It talked about bad pieces, white's queen being a bit offside, but suddenly that black bishop, it's just a dead piece. It's a block of wood and Duda shaking his head. Yeah. But he's doing okay. He can just support this white pawn. He can protect it and... The game goes on, black playing without this bishop in the corner. Yeah, I mean, he has a knight that is a willing defender, a light square bishop that is willing to come to its aid. And uh, Duda does put his knight on the edge of the board with the sole purpose of locking that light squared bishop out. And I like this position suddenly for Duda. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the one thing I, the one thing is, I mean, how stable is that pawn in reality? I That's mean, can, can Black start to go, well, no big deal, play around it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this white pawn, this very far advanced white pawn, currently it's tying down the Black Queen. It's caging this Black Bishop in the corner, as we mentioned. Uh, but yeah, Magnus is going to hope that it can be easily blockaded. You can just ignore it, pretend it's not there. Uh, the Black Knight jumping into the centre. And actually, maybe it's more important that the White Queen is just not coordinated with the rest of her army. And after this Bishop move, it would be super tempting now, if I were Magnus, to use the Black Knight, capture White's dark square bishop, and suddenly White is... There we go. <laughs> we saw that trade very quickly there from Magnus, and suddenly the Black Queen can start threatening this isolated White pawn in the centre of the board, the one that has just recaptured. Suddenly White's really weak on the dark squares. So the Rook jumps in instead, attacking two pawns now. And I mentioned things were turning in Duda's favour, but now that Black has complete grip on the dark squares, I think it's actually the other way around. Duda okay. shaking his head as well. And lower on the clock. Definitely. Yeah, suddenly, I mean, this is still very tense. It could go either way, but suddenly maybe Magnus is the happier of the two. And uh, the white knight, I mean, which piece is worse here, guys? The white knight on the edge of the board or that black bishop in the corner? It's not clear, actually. Maybe they just balance each other out. Yeah, maybe what's needed is uh, maybe for white just to kind of roll the dice and try to bring the queen into the game, even at the cost of some extra material. And uh, the, just bank on the fact that this pass pawn needs to be pushed, can find a way to kind of try to dis dislodge the black queen. Yeah, the only problem it's for not white... not easy, though. Yeah, white's queen now, she is kind of tied down to the h2 pawn, the, uh, the white's pawn on the h2 square. If you look at black's uh, bishop in the centre and the black queen, they're eyeing up this pawn on the diagonal. Uh, so white's queen temporarily tied down Duda looks really unhappy, meanwhile. Just psychologically, I think he's uh, just struggling to adapt to this kind of transition of Black suddenly getting active uh, with his rook. And Pontus, does it look to you that White's lost control? Yeah, I think he's totally mm. lost control. Yeah. Wow, uh, totally lost control as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 because he also lost control over the clock. Ah. <laughs> so I think... Uh, 40 seconds, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he's in a big problems. Um, he just looks uncomfortable, vis I mean, yeah. visibly. Yeah. And Duda, normally he keeps a poker face if he can. I've seen him have a dead loss position. Sometimes the computer says plus five for the opponent, but he still looks super calm. This time, no, he's shaking his head. And OK, he brings his bishop forward. Oh, no. There we go. I mean, it's just expected because of the clock, because he's lost control on the position. And that's when blunders happen. It, they don't just occur out of nothing uh, most of the time. And OK, here we see Stockfish, the computer suggestions, the top two moves which give Black a significant advantage they're also the most obvious moves in the position. Uh, sometimes that's not the case, but here, Black has a choice. The Black Rook in the centre is attacked by White's Bishop. You can just sidestep and capture a pawn. Magnus does this. You could have captured the other pawn as well on the left side. That would have been strong too. But uh, yeah, it's looking very good for Magnus right now. He's a pawn up and White's struggling to create counter threats. Uh, any compensation here. <sighs> okay, the White Bishop stepped back. That is a bad sign for Duda. And, uh, okay, Magnus now, can he continue being greedy? If the black rook goes away from the centre, though, maybe white's queen can re-centralise itself. He's relying on tricks to save this game. Magnus is a pawn up, and Magnus is completely dominant on the dark squares. 
do you think definitely uh, Jan Christoph will lose this with also 30 seconds on the clock? It's looking likely, but I mean, the win isn't clear cut, right? Mm. I mean, still Magnus way. still has to work, uh, work, put some, put in some effort and try and find it. It all depends on White's far advanced pawn, actually. If it can ever kind of, if you can ever dislodge the Black Queen and push that pawn, you might even win with White. But uh, for now, that White pawn is under lock and key. And yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> okay, Magnus does get greedy, as I mentioned. And now two pawns up for Black. How do you break through in the dark squares? That's a problem. Okay. Uh, white sidesteps with his rook. A huge threat in the position. White, I mentioned the back rank checkmates against the white king. Now black's king is the one threatened. White's rook wants to step up to the top of the board and that would actually end in checkmate because white's bishop covers the only escape square for the black king. Magnus can deal with this, right? He can step back with his He's bishop, for example, the dark square bishop block the white queen's diagonal. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately that was uh, logical and very good. And now the queen, I guess, has to maybe threaten something, maybe move the queen to the edge of the, um, not to the mid edge of the board, to the middle of the board and mm -hmm. at least threaten the check. Yeah, the white queen, as mentioned, needs to centralize herself. There we go. There was actually a huge threat, as Yvanka mentioned, the white queen and bishop lined up on the same diagonal, trying to sneak through to the black king. But that's just been blocked by Magnus's last pawn push. Suddenly black's king is super safe. And now here I suggest uh, when in doubt, push Harry. <laughs> I mean, and the thing is that I kind of want to activate the rook, wow, but that's not really possible. Corner. But if you go into the corner, the, the issue still remains that the white king is potentially unsafe, can be vulnerable to a rook coming down to the first row, and that would be something that uh, is called the back rank mate. Um, mm -hmm. Difficult, difficult job now. Yeah, and there was also one trick in the position. White's rook wanted to come up to the seventh rank on the last go, but it would have just been captured. And uh, yeah, this one looking very one-sided traffic right now. Magnus, all he needs to do, bring the black rook into the game, back, and uh, I can't even see a move for white at this point. No, he will stop on the C file and then it's over. Yeah, you're right, Pontus, just... And then uh, he's going to step up with the king or something yeah. quite soon. Mm, yes. So I think this is... Uh... Uh, it's not very good for, for Duda. There's still some kind of tricks, you know, maybe there's the possibility of white playing bishop takes pawn. So I like your move of just going, stepping up with the king. That's a very Magnus move, uh, stepping forward with the black king, just covering everything, defending everything. But instead, Magnus grabs another pawn. He's actually three pawns up and yeah. have we just seen Duda resign? I think we have. We Magnus have. takes the win. Wow. With the white pieces in game.